real life street stars. We here with Lil Twist. What it is? I don't think it's yeah, out, yeah, but you know yeah. I don't even think it's Lil Twist no more, is it? Huh? It ain't Lil Twist no more, is it? Big old know. Twist, yeah, big it's, Twist. It's Lil Twist, Twist, okay. Twist Elf, Young Carter, a lot of names. Man, I want to take it back, man, because. I remember back in the grifter days. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? I remember it was two young niggas that was really killing shit. It was you, Lil Twist, and Lil Zay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember, I think, seeing both of y'all perform. I don't know what the fuck event it was, bro, but we was out there. Grifter had them G'd up. Uh, Gucci uh, <laughs> business and shit. This shit was crazy, bro. I just remember seeing you and Lil Zay going off, bro. Is Grifter, Grifter had the monkey or is that... Who had the monkey? Clout? Who had the who had the gorilla? Y'all don't remember that dancing gorilla? Yeah. Who was that? Grifter or Clout? That was Clout. Oh, okay. That was Clout. But I just remember seeing y'all perform. That's how old I am. I remember seeing y'all perform and saying, "Damn, let me your niggas got it." Yeah. And then next thing you know, y'all took off. But I just want I want you to go back to that time frame, bro, and just tell me like, how old were you during that that time frame when you was out here killing shit? Uh, I started rapping when I was seven. <laughs> But by the time I was 10 years old, Texas Twist was number one on K-104. Right. Yeah, so I was 10 when all that was bubbling way before Young Money. Yeah. Yeah. And did you, like, um, did you know Lil Zay or did y'all just... Yeah, just all right, I'll get into the story. Um, My sister used to work at Big T and at this at this store called Maloney's which was right across the um, hallway from Diamond D CD store. Um, Diamond D is a guy I used to be signed to Texas Twist Days. And, um, but I would, Lil Zay had an album signing at that, at that CD store for No Pass, No Play. And Zay had a, a song with DSR at the time to, um, to follow the rain drops and clarions and laptops. Yeah, that shit was hard. And well. that's before I got on. And Zay had a, a, a album signing at Diamond CD store. So I just went up to Zay like, yo, I want to rap. He like, oh, yeah, well, meet my producers. I met Nico and met all his executives. Then I met Diamond. And I went to Big T every day. So I would go to Big T every day. Told Diamond D I wanted to rap. He told me to go around Big T and rap for some money. And I brought him $12 back. And so he was like, all right, this kid's serious. And then... Texas Twist King. Man, for those who watching this interview, y'all don't understand. Them two niggas was like <laughs> the kid probably y'all was like the Bow Wows at Dallas and yeah, shit. Like sure. y'all was the niggas that we watched growing up. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So take us through, you know what I mean? The uh the Texas Twist song, man, it, it had an impact. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was rooting for you. And I just remember it seemed like it went from that to you getting signed. Um yeah. take us through like how that song got popular and to the point where you got Actually, son. Greg Street used to work here in Dallas. Greg Street was on from uh, 6 to 10, I think. And um, he used to do this thing called the Battle of the Home Jams. And he inserted Texas Twist on the Battle of the Home Jams. And it made to the 11th round. I got beat out by a young Muhammad out here in Dallas. Young Muhammad knocked me out. Shout out, young Muhammad. Yeah, shout out, Muhammad. Uh... But fuck him still for knocking me out at Texas Twist. I'm so mad about that. No, 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 shout out to Muhammad. But um, yeah, he knocked me out the 12th round, but they still put, I guess, just on some cute little kid shit, they still put Texas Twist into a heavy rotation. And being signed to Diamond, I had a street team called MVP at the time, and we would call K104 every day requesting Texas Twist. And it ended up being number one for six weeks straight. Greg Street. Got fired once Skip Cheatham became the program director with his hating ass. And um, and he pulled every record that Greg Street had on the radio off the radio. So Texas Twist went from number one on Monday to Tuesday being completely off the radio. So in fifth grade, I'm stressed the fuck out. Like, what am I going to do? And um, I kept going. And my mama ended up putting money into me. You know, oh, 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 I missed the part in the story. Um... So yeah, he put the song off the radio. You still following me? Okay. He put the song off the radio, and then uh, I started failing in school because I was the most popular. So Diamond was mad, like, we're going to pull this album off the shelf, telling my mama, who was the president of Diamond Records at the time, uh, we're going to pull his album off the shelf so he can get his grades up, so he can learn. And my mama like, well, no, let me handle that in the household. This is business. Keep the album on the shelf. He wanted to pull his big boss card, pull my album off the shelf. My mama pulled me off the label. 
She was working at this spot called Indy Mac Bank in Irving. She would take her checks and put money into me, and she ain't got she got these CDs pressed up. Yeah, those ain't my Newports. No, those are my Newports. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she um she uh put money into me, you know what I'm saying? And she got this CD pressed up where it was a double disc CD. It was a song I had called Youngster, and it had a video with it, and that's the CD that I gave to Cortez Bryant, which got me signed to Young Money. Man. I'm sorry. What, what label is that for those who don't know? Oh, Young Money. Yeah, Young Money Entertainment. Bro, you really grew up hip hop on some like, yeah. on some most shit. Like, I remember because back then I probably was in I was uh, in middle school and I'm like, this nigga is uh, signed to fucking Lil Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> I hey. see this nigga was just do the Texas twit and this nigga because you know for us who just watching like you going through it day by day but for us to just watching that shit happened in like it seemed like a month like yeah. nigga you was on Texas twist and you riding around with Lil Wayne yeah. like you know you hear about story rock star stories you know like that people went through young like tell us a give us a rock star story you know what I'm saying something that only Twist, little twist experience, you know what I'm saying? Growing up hip hop. A rock star story? Um, I have so many stories. I just. Give us the one you can talk about. Uh, I don't know what, what are you looking for? Like, I just, uh, like. <laughs> Cause I was like, I remember like. Are you Wayne, looking for excitement, it, funny? What do you? What? What? I don't what, know. What? Nah, not anything. You just feel comfortable talking. Something like that you experienced that nobody. I know was a part that of. when I got, I don't know if this is a rock star story, but I, I am a rock star, and I used to just be tripping. Uh, I remember when I first got signed to Young Money. I was at the um, a Millie video shoot, and that's when Drake came. That's when we met Drake. Drake came to the set with a portfolio with headshots from Degrassi. He was well put together from the very beginning. And I remember Wayne looking at that portfolio, flipping through it, and just handed, handed it back to Tess and said, sign him. So I knew he was coming on board, but now he's on board and it seems like everything is evolving around Drake. And I'm like, man, I was here first. Why the fuck is Drake about to come? off the label first i would i would um take it upon myself to go and make this songs about drake and email them to them i would diss drake and tez and i would send them the song in the email because i was so mad that i knew he was coming before me so <laughs> yeah that's kind of crazy and they would be like bro every time i see drake be like bro why do you keep dissing me man <laughs> Now, um, were you nervous in the beginning? Because, you know, being around stars can be kind of nerving, thinking like, I'm going to have to produce this or I'm going to have to come like this. Did you feel any, any of that when you first got to, when you got there to the label? Uh, a little bit because in the very beginning, Wayne didn't like me like that. Like, oh, Tez, Tez brought me to Young Money. Tez is who found me, but Tez is up there with Wayne that's running everything at that time. And Wayne had just found Chucky at the time, so everybody would be talking about Twist, and Chucky was the one that was really just popping in the label already in Young Money. So I, I kind of felt a little pressure from, from Chucky of knowing that I had to come hard or do a little bit more to try to surpass everybody else likes in Chuck. I had to stand out, you know. Man, I just remember when you did sign, just, you know, everybody was like rooting for you. You know what I'm saying? Why hasn't there been like a project? You know what I'm saying? Like we, I would have thought, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, you get signed, boom, project. Why do you think that that didn't happen that way? Uh. It was a gift and a curse with Lil Twist 
and um young money and i wouldn't have had it any other way let's make that clear i became very very family oriented more than business with me and wayne's relationship so um at that time if you can remember my first single little secret featuring bow wow and then i dropped the second single um called uh i think it was new money with me and my son and then i dropped love affair so i was prepping for don't get it twisted the album but um at that time i was on xanax i used to really 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 love xanax and uh i would do different things and sip syrup and do all these wild things as a young guy young rock star and um i felt it was cool at one point and i felt i needed to do that i'm doing it with my boss with my brother my idol that's what i need to do but at a certain point in time wayne was like twist it's time to you know what i'm saying it's, it's time to slow down on on those pills and shit and he didn't feel that i slowed down when he told me to so he put a halt on my debut album just past the business it was just Lil Wayne we gonna teach Lil Bro since he don't wanna listen to me we stopping the album he stopped the album probably fucking forgot that he stopped the album now a year passed and anticipation for that is just slowly still little twist I still had a crazy buzz but it was slowly just passing over and then um my little bro Justin called Lil Bieber called and I ended up moving to LA and it was just a discouraging thing to where I, I I moved from Miami after all of that happened, just being disappointed and ended up moving to LA and just never got back on that track. Got too comfortable off of being Lil Twist, the guy that I built up. Yeah. How how much do you think the industry plays a part in like you being on the Zanny? Because I I remember going to LA and I was out there with Jay White, you know what I'm saying, and they was like. I don't I can't say that the industry played a part on any of that because it was a personal decision with me. It wasn't that the industry drove me to it. Such and such had it. I said, What is it? Let me have it. I took it and from there I overindulge. You probably can afford five, but I'ma buy them by the honey pack. Now I got them bitches and and when I had them I took them shit. <laughs> she just had to stop. Now, um, before all the the artists that we have today in Texas or in Dallas, period, you had Dallas on your can, back. Can you roll up another bunch? Go ahead, sir. Before all the out, that, that pretty much all the artists that we um had right now, you had pretty much Dallas on your back as the youngin, mm -hmm. as the young one coming into the game. Um. As there, and as we make a resurgence in Dallas artists coming out, what is your plan to step for, step into the fold and, you know, put it back together? I have more of a plan now. I can say that uh, I had Dallas on my back, like, you know, the people in the city far as you and you who said you see me at your middle school or such and such and who see me at Keys Park perform Texas Twist and who see me at the Reunion Arena. Those people was on my back. But far as the politics went, those people wasn't on my back. So when I got signed and how they was so easy to pull my record off the radio, once I got signed, it was like I left Dallas at 14, now I'm in Atlanta, and I didn't really turn back like that until we had a big Young Money show here in Dallas. I wasn't focused on coming to build a relationship with Skip Cheatham and these program directors because they already played me. And now these niggas happen to come kiss ass at these same Lil Wayne concerts, twist this, twist that, when... Y'all didn't play me, but now I didn't one up on you niggas, and it's just different. So I had the city of the people who actually couldn't hate on a 10-year-old and was, like, rooting for me. But then I had the niggas who was in position who I needed at 10 years old at radio stations wasn't really fucking with it. It went from me being number one in Texas Twist to me begging for Texas Summer Music Conference passes and back this whatever begging 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 these people of authority and i feel like they x me out or play me so when i got on i'm in atlanta now i'm in miami so now um i'm in dallas this is this is the longest i've been in dallas since i've lived here at 14 for like 
three months. My bro YD outside. Can you get him? Can you get YD from the door? YD from the door. Can you get him? Um. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know what else I said. So so, present day Dallas. You know we have, what you know we got, Yellow Beezy, Mo Three Trap. We got a lot of people. You know in the forefront doing their thing right now. You know what I'm saying. You being somebody that's been in the industry and, and you've been to that to that plateau, um, what are you seeing as far as the Dallas Fort Worth music scene right now? Like what are you liking about it? Yellow Bees is a homie of mine. Trap Boy is a homie of mine. I've yet to meet Mo Three, but I fuck with his music. Um, me and my manager Cortez was just saying how melodic he is, he got some nice music. Um but I don't know too much more outside of those three. Yeah, I'm getting a call. Yo. Yeah, I'm in the middle of this interview. Where y'all at? I think you're We We outside. We just need you. Hey, it's, it's number 106. Yeah, it's not stuck. Please don't come out there. Uh, huh? We just gonna pick it back up. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Three, two, two, one. Now, since you've come into the um, the change and the things and your actions, the way you move, when you go into the studio now, you get ready to create a body of work. What are some of the things you need today to some best create? Some of the things I need. Mm -hmm. We good. <laughs> Good vibes. Um, and that's basically it. You know what I'm saying? I don't like no negative people around me, so I don't have to be negative. Uh, I got out of jail, did some time. I really, um, I was a, I had a short, short fuse a couple years back. And I, I grew out of that a little bit. So, you know, I just try to be more chill, kick back, lay back. Man, uh, you got a crazy fashion sense, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> What is some of your favorite brands? Or if you don't want to mention your favorite brands, what are some of your favorite things that you know you be grabbing that you just feel like is dope that niggas ain't on yet? Uh, I'm not the big flashy, flashy guy as far as in Balenciaga and Dolce, all this shit. And I got those pieces, but I be in an urban outfit is going crazy. So y'all can get a lot of the shit that I wear. I wear a skater shit. I be on Fairfax normal streetwear shit you know and then if i find some exclusive wild bright shit i like bright bright color standout shit i don't know what is the difference in music culture from dallas to la what's the difference yeah like the vibe as far oh, as like big, niggas getting known and big yeah. big big difference it's, they on a whole different tempo out there that's that's the answer they on a different tempo than us, for sure. Texas and Cali. We slowed up. Now, Twist, you you, you got a show. Growing Up Hip Hop. Yes, sir. Growing Up Hip Hop. Um, When does that drop? Growing Up Hip Hop as December 5th. Okay, that's coming up quick. Yeah, it's about to come on. This shit is funny, too, this season. So make sure y'all tune in. It's hilarious. Yeah, and I actually like this show. That's a good show, man. Um, no, It's even better now that I'm on it. You said what? It's even better now that I want it. <laughs> hey, that's what's 10. up. I actually, I actually watched that show. Um, how did you end up becoming a part of that show? You know what I'm saying? Uh, right when I got out of jail, um, they called me. Well, actually, before I went to jail, the creator of the show named Datari Turner, um, he reached out to my president, Mac Main, and Mac just told me, yo, Twist, would you be interested in going on Growing Up Hip Hop? And I'm like, yeah, but... I had to go to jail and went within like three days. So he was like, we're going to reach out to you as soon as you get out. As soon as I got out of jail, they called me and shit I went through. What is it like going to, you know, having it having it like you want it, all the success, and just living how you want to live, to just having all that taken away from you, and knowing you got to sit down and just have all your 
everything it had oh to man it was the that was the worst feeling in the world coming from in the hills doing my thing to baker row la county i never thought i'd see little texas twist little twist in la county it was the sickest shit ever <laughs> next to next to niggas on death row fucking killing three months i heard the sickest jail stories in that motherfucker it's disgusting it was but to answer your question it was it was life-changing it was very humbling because i was moving faster than i should have been so it was definitely something that i i needed for sure it was so bad but it was something that i needed so is there anything in particular that that changed to make you go down there like you say you went you know that you got out of jail um what did that did that help you in a sense like yeah. when you got out yeah oh yeah yeah definitely what are some of the things that you learned while you was, uh put up um more so personal things things that i need to pay attention to myself more about type shit like um just slow down like i was really living super reckless and maybe i hadn't slowed down when my brother told me to slow down i was just doing my thing i'm i'm young money i'm straight and and with these certain conversations that me and wayne has had it's like i didn't have to worry about too much of the things that's why i wasn't focused like i should have been I'm just living my life because i know i'm gonna be good with wayne regardless and that wasn't the mindset when i went to jail that opened my eyes to a lot of shit like yeah this say, shit can be taken let's say that you had a 13 14 year old child and he was a monster when it came to music and he had a chance to sign. Would you let him sign? To Lil Wayne? To any, just any record label, period. Uh, yeah, if that's his dream, because I would be mad as hell if my mama's decision wasn't to let me leave her house at Oak Cliff. Who knows, I mean, at 14 in Oak Cliff, who knows how life would have turned out. Lil Twist probably would have been throwing FedEx boxes. Who the fuck knows? But she took a gamble with that decision and um of course some things probably didn't go the way that she seen fit as far as me getting into some things that i decided to get into but uh she she you know she don't take nothing back because life is great yeah and i would be mad as hell if yeah. that wasn't her decision so one of the things i always wondered about right is usually when somebody comes and grabs somebody from one city somebody follows behind it right at one point, Big Chief, I think, was supposed to be signed to uh, Cash Money. Big and, Chief. And then I think Young Nation was signed to YMCMB, or at least that's what it appeared no, to be. No, 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 no. Young but, Nation's my friends. So, but when they when they on like something like on a BT award or something where they they yeah won't... yeah yeah he walked on stage with me fully walked on stage with us got you yeah uh uh Rockstar story <laughs> for Rockstar story for fully um. We in the we in the van headed to the BT Awards and I think Gutter gave Fooley some Molly or something. And Young Money look up and this nigga Fooley on fucking stage at the BT Awards. He was loaded, bitch, and just walked on stage. They call Young Money, he get up and walk on stage. I'm like, believe that, my nigga. Oh. <laughs> rock star. Hey, that's a rock star shit. <laughs> no, that's my dog though. <laughs> don't 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 get it twisted. That's my dog. He got a whole song with me and Wayne called Nerve. Like. Wayne fuck with them too. Yeah, because that was at one point the the sound was so crazy it was like on yeah, some. Yeah, I was in shit. Atlanta right when I right when I left and I was dropping a little secret. Um, at the time I was in Atlanta, that's when I was hearing about Young Nation. I went to school with them at Duncanville. I did one semester ninth grade. I went to school with them yeah. in middle school in Duncanville High. Then I left. Now I'm a little twist, and now I'm hearing about Young Nation bubbling. So I came back and paid attention to my dogs, and we just kept rocking. Hey, now that you've been in the industry, man, how much sauce do they be stealing from Dallas, man? Um, because <laughs> you know I can that's tell a, you Wayne us, takes a lot of sauce from me, so that's a, that's a <laughs> lot of that's enough stealing right there. No, um, I don't know, man. Uh, Dallas is very sauced up, but a lot of different places have different ways about them. You know what I'm saying? And Dallas can, uh, Dallas is accepted everywhere because we so thorough, so real, solid. So I won't say that. Niggas is taking a lot from Dallas because everywhere I've been has been a different. But Dallas niggas know how to go make a mark somewhere. Yeah. 
Now, uh, you said you've been back about three months um, in Dallas. Has it? Have you had to readjust, or is it you? Did you just settle in, kind of like it was home? Yeah, I readjusted. I went and got a Glock. I went to the gun show the other day. It's in my name, cops. Uh, <laughs> Uh yeah, I went to the gun show. That was a readjustment in itself because even in LA, I feel more comfortable than I do on these Dallas streets. These niggas out here is wigging. They killed my homie Andre Emmett. Rest in peace, Andre Emmett. I looked up to Andre. He used to live on the end of the street in my hood in Oak Cliff before I got signed, and I heard about that nonsense. Um, so yeah, man, you know that was my readjustment right there. I mean, you you say that, but it's like niggas uh, in LA get pressed like a motherfucker. Yeah, 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 they do, but um, I got gang ties. Hello, mob ties. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. The, uh, hey, can you get the way, man? Can you get Tory? Tory from the front. Hey, y'all, this like growing up hip hop. I'm just welcoming y'all into my world. Y'all, y'all ain't gotta cut none of this shit. Hey, nah, we ain't. That was that was. <laughs> that was that was the way, man. <laughs> so. But yeah, I was like, like it's re- it's gangster out there, bro. Like, I see, it's very gangster out there. Out there, there, out there, yeah, they can they they extort the niggas that's able to get extorted. It's it's really sick in L.A. for sure. It can get sick, but if you straight, you know what I'm saying, if you a solid nigga, you're not gonna get played with. I've been out there nine years. It's been great. So present day, we working on music. What what do, what do we got going on? We have Young Carter 2 right now that I just um, finished, just, just finished. I've been working on Young Carter 2 since 2017, since I got out of L.A. County for two years. Uh, just finding the right records because the way I took it as if I've been in the game for a minute. My name is known on different continents for good and bad reasons. Um, it's like it's, it's a time to go hard or go home for me. It's like my next shit gotta be undeniable. So that's why I worked on this one for so so long. But um yeah, young Carter too. And uh growing up hip hop. That's that's what's next. Will you have any features from uh anybody else on Young Money? Like a, a Wayne, I have, Drake. I, I have Wayne on there. Uh we sent one to Nikki um for this one with me and C B. I have Chris on there. Oh, I have Gut on there. Um I don't have Drizzy on there. I have a record that was just played to me that they say Drake would sound good on, um, but I haven't done nothing with Aubrey yet. So for for anybody, you know, you know how Dallas is, man. For anybody from Dallas Fort Worth, you know, living their dream, chasing it, and they want to get in the industry, what is some advice that you would give? <clears throat> some advice that I would give um, for someone who's chasing their dream? Is that was the that was the question, right? Yeah. Um, follow it, chase it, never let nobody erase it. Looking at no, just uh, <laughs> just uh, just follow your dreams, my nigga. I had a lot of people tell me that it wasn't gonna happen when it was happening, or when Texas Twist got off the radio. You wouldn't believe how many people really the energy I took upon of people that was really hating on a ten year old that didn't. It wasn't no blueprint. Nobody knew Lil Wayne phone number to call and say sign me. So it was like, I don't know. I don't know. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> we don't command. Um, let's get into this, man. I just before we get out of here, man. Let's touch on Skip Cheatham t- taking your, your song off the radio, man. It seems like you, you're, you're holding on to Is that. Skip still bit. alive? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> 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 I don't know. We got to check on him. We got to check on him. Let's talk about it, man. Let's talk about it, man. Because cause some would say Skip was one of the people that helped a lot of artists. You know what I'm saying? Really? And I ain't never met them artists. <laughs> I, I'm with, I ain't never heard that ever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I and and I was one and I was one I was one of the first artists. Greg Street don't if like we that. if we think about it like Dallas nigga, though. local Dallas rappers. I was like one of the first niggas outside me, DSR, Grifton, the, before I could remember, you know what I'm saying? If it was some niggas before that with the DOC and whoever the fuck else. But um, yeah, he didn't help. I didn't hear DSR on the radio like that at that time either. DSR was running the streets. So, text. I'm sorry? The Boogie Movement was on the radio. 
They had to put Young that Nation them. <laughs> yeah, that was later. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was later on after um they probably got enough emails to say y'all don't support us. Does Birdman really rub his hands together that frequently? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They say he really rubs his hands Definitely. all the time. <laughs> At all times. <laughs> Man, you know, me personally, man, uh, that uh, up in the studio with you and with, with you and Wayne, man, I used to smash my chick to that all the time, That's man. not me, that's not me, but oh. I appreciate you fucking with the game. <laughs> no, 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 this no, no, you know what's funny, though, that's crazy, um, Wayne and Short Dog got another song, no, no, it's okay, Wayne and Short Dog got another song, too, that niggas think it's me, uh, so, I don't know, Short don't sound like me with his ugly ass. So twist, man. You, you go to Thanksgiving dinner with a nice, you know, tender that you met. She don't make your plate. You call her the next day or now? First of all, my mama make my plate. Oh, mm. yeah. My mama been making my plate for many years. My cousin can tell you. That's the only person make my plate. Or my sister. So what are the rules when bringing bring, bringing a new girl around Thanksgiving to bring the family? Don't, don't. <laughs> First of all, yeah, don't bring them around my fam. My family, she could be the baddest bitch, and I got some anus that's just going to make her feel so small or something. Like, <laughs> my, my family is ruthless, but, uh, yeah, ain't no, they, 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 they treat some of my foreigners nice. I've brought some, some around. I've brought some around, you know, and <laughs> some. Now, how often do you get hit up for paper by your family? Paper by my family. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it 100. Keep it 100. Um, no one outside of my immediate family in my family really asks me for too much or nothing. If I decide to give or when I give, I just give. But no one takes it upon itself to text me and ask me for anything. My mom and my sister has dip story. Right. And after all, after all the Bieber shit and all everything else, man, as far as just society now, man, we're, in, we're about to go in 2020. It seems like culture what vulture. Bieber shit? No, I'm fucking with you. What? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. No, okay. uh, it seems like culture vultures is real, you know what I'm saying? Going into the new new, new uh, decade, whatever. What are your thoughts on that as far are as Are you people, calling Bieber a culture vulture? No, nah, I'm, just, I'm just saying as far as just everyone in hip hop, as far as just... The lines is blurred now. I wasn't defending him. I was asking you a question. Oh. <laughs> no, nah, I'm not calling him a culture vulture at all. Okay. Uh, I would have something to say behind that. I would say he he isn't a culture vulture. Um, he just has politically correct people around him who can control his life. And I wasn't that guy. You know, and, and, and I wasn't letting them control it for the whole time being of they of them saying that we were so bad. So letting them know you're not a puppet, nigga. And he looked up so much. He looked up to Wayne and myself so much. That's what they hated. I had control of their cash cow of what they wanted control of. He come to me for advice because I've been around this shit for so long. And I would give them the real and they hated that. We got to get this nigga away. Out of your whole journey through this game, what is the most positive thing you could say you've done and that you was like, this This is, if I could do it all over again, I would do it all over again because of this moment right here? Everything I've done? Yeah, everything I've done because it's made me who I am right now. And whatever time it is, I would do it all over again to be exactly this person. Because I've learned a lot. Would I go back and change some shit? Like, never took that Zan from such and such? Yeah. yeah. I, w- I, I, I would have n- turned away. But I didn't, so I can't regret it. And it made me who I am. And uh, if I would have dropped my debut album, Don't Get It Twisted, in 2011, when I was a freshman and all that shit was popping, um double xl freshman and all that shit was popping i don't think i was as ready as i was saying i was at that time i'm glad all of that happened i had to go to jail i had to catch a case i had to lose some shit to rap the way i rap now 
and you will see. Does Lil Twist have any plans to start his own label? Yes, New Money, Young Money. I got some artists in the, in the, in yeah. here right now. Yeah, I have New Money, Young Money, which was a a, a plan of me and Stunners, me and Uncle Stunner. Um, when it was Young Money, Cash Money, I dropped a single called New Money, featuring my homie, my son, and Stunner loved that record. And I was telling him that's gonna be my branch off, New Money, Cash Money. Let's do it, Young. Let's do it, Nev. And that was really gonna be something because Uncle Stunner really granted whatever a nigga would ask. And shit just went to shit, and it's still something. New money, young money now, because now my brother got 100% right to young money, and uh, it's going down. So now we got new money, young money. I got some artists in here, my brother YD in here. You dig? I got a little Jake in here. Showtime in here. Peace in here. Yeah, yeah we just, um, and there's a couple that's not here, but yeah, I'm building. Amen, amen. You got any shout outs? Any shout outs? Yeah. Uh yeah, man. Shout out to my mama. Shout out to the gang. Shout out to Lil Wayne, ugly. Uh, <laughs> sh- uh yeah, man. Moolah. That's what it is. Man, uh you just said there was a nigga who said that um not a nigga, Tory Lanez. He said Young Thug has influenced all the new artists that are out right now. And of course, we felt like that's an egregious statement because we all know Lil Wayne produced. It's a lot the, of it's a lot of um, more weird rappers now. That influence came from Thug. Thug came in with a, a the same type of style. As tune, but it wasn't the exact same like Danny Glover and shit. Like you could tell the influence for sure, but it wasn't the exact same. So there is a different lane of their influence because I didn't hear I didn't heard these new niggas come on this bitch literally screaming and shit. Now tune wasn't much so screaming. You would get them singing on a song, barely saying a fucking word or something, like slurred the fuck up. But he wasn't doing what half of the industry is doing now due to probably the influence from Young Thug. So, uh, yeah, and now the game is so oversaturated. You remember that that skit on, um, it was one of the dedications, I think, in DJ Drummers, like, who keep giving these whack niggas the code? Yeah, it's like so many people, it's a little everything now. It's, uh, it's oversaturated, and uh, I'm I'm... I'm technically tired. No, I'm yeah, joking. They said uh, <laughs> Wayne was the most impactful artist of the 21st century. Would you agree? Yeah, that? duh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, nigga. Yeah, I mean, I mean. Not, wait, wait, no. They said Thug was, and then Wayne came back, and you know, but. Would you I get? mean, no, it's just to the real, to the niggas who understand, you know, not the kids that was born in, let's say, 2006. I don't know what these kids are born in now, but. Not those kids. We can't ask them. We can't rely on their answer because they don't really know. They don't know nothing about a, let alone a Carter One or any of the mixtape shit. Like, they know probably about Carter Five. Like, okay, that wasn't it for us because Meek just dropped some, and they really don't. That's their personal beliefs, but the real, like the Meeks, the niggas that they actually like or that they giving a the praise to, they know where this shit originated and stemmed from. Amen. If anybody want to get in contact with you for any bookings, features, how would they do that? Uh, reach out to Cortez Bryant. Uh, there is a Young Money email. Uh, I'm not. I don't know it off the top of my head, but there's ways. Yeah, I feel. I feel. I I just ask that question to every artist, but I feel like if they want to contact Lil yeah, Twist, yeah. go to Young Money. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's been it's been ways Man. for sure. I've been reached. Little twist, man. Little Carter, two out in a minute. Young, young, young. You on that though. motherfucking ass, man. You was a legend in the city. You a legend in your own right, man. You going you gonna take the game to new heights. Bring this Dallas, this Texas shit to new heights for sure, man. Thank you, thank you. We salute you and all the work you're doing. You all real life street star, brother. I appreciate that, man. Love you. Do what I'm saying. More like and, and if you and if you and if you from Dallas and you don't know that about the Texas twist, get the fuck yeah, out. Yeah, they the don't city. know they're not from <laughs> Dallas. <laughs> That's those that's that's those 2008 kids. I don't know. <laughs>
Street Stars, nigga. Move. Hey.